What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to edit a podcast using only GarageBand and the tools that come with it. Let's go. So when you first open up GarageBand, you'll get this pop-up window. Go ahead and choose empty project and mic or line, then click create. Now go ahead and drag the audio that you've recorded from your podcast into the timeline. Then go ahead and click your guest's audio track and go to the top left and click the little knob. Make sure that track is selected instead of master and then go down to plugins, click the drop down menu. And here's where we're gonna add the plugins to the channel so that we can mix the audio and make it sound as good as possible. So the plugins that you're gonna wanna use are a channel EQ, a compressor, a de-esser, and a gain knob. The audio runs from top to bottom through the plugins. So you'll have gain first, channel EQ next, compressor, and then de-esser. And there's a reason that you want to have it in this order that I'll explain later. Now what I highly recommend you do is find a place that he is talking for quite a while and click that timeline up at the top with the numbers. Click and drag. It'll turn yellow. That means it's going to play on repeat so you know that you're going to hear the same piece of audio over and over again so you can mix it. Now let's go ahead and dial in our gain first. Now from here you really want to set it as close as you can get to a perfect balance which is gonna be somewhere around this range. You want it to barely touch that volume knob without hitting the red. College, it took me a few years to get to tech. I didn't come to tech right after high school. I kind of bounced around trying to figure it out. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to the channel EQ. This is a really important piece of the puzzle because there's always gonna be frequencies that don't sound very good. They either sound boomy or boxy or nasally, and you wanna get those removed if you're going for a really clean professional sound, especially if you use a cheaper mic. This is gonna help a lot. So on the far left, you have that red roll off. You wanna use that to cut all the low boomy frequencies out that don't need to be in there. This will be a subtle difference, but it'll definitely make it sound cleaner and help in the final mix. Now you want to grab another parameter and look for something that sounds a little too muddy or boomy. This is usually around the 200 to 400 range. Now if your ears aren't trained, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the process, but if you listen really close and carefully as you move the parameters, you'll hear what they're doing and hear what sounds pleasing and what doesn't. There really is no right answer here. It's all about just making it sound as clean as possible and basically removing the quote unquote ugliness of the sound and each mic, each person's voice and the way it was recorded is gonna have a different need with this. But generally you do wanna cut out a little bit of muddiness between like two to 500 hertz and then maybe even add a little bit of a high end boost with the purple in the far right just to add a little bit of a sparkle to the sound. So now that we've got a good tone, let's go ahead and move on to the compressor. I mean, I never, I never want people to think I'm trying to be something I'm not. So just well, crank that amount up. You always want to aim kind of for about a kid. three uh, to four pastor, dots so on the compressor. And what this means is how hard the compressor is squeezing the sound. That's what compression is doing uh, is it's grade, squeezing the sound and making it so more evened out. Now the attack is how quick the compressor acts. Um, but don't worry too much about the setting. Just find something that feels good, feels right. I recommend something around 14 to 20 for a podcast. Keep that ratio between 2.0 and 3.0, so right in the middle, 2.5 is perfect. Okay, it's time for the last step, which is the de-esser. What this does is it's taking care of the really high hiss sounds, so all the S's and the really harsh stuff that's in the high end, the sibilance. You can play around with the frequency, but usually around 10 to 12K sounds perfect. And just make sure that that suppression is as much as it can be without messing with the sound too much. The only goal here is to make it sound less harsh, especially when people are listening with headphones. All right, so it's sounding quite a bit cleaner. It's sounding good. Now let's work on the podcast host channel. Now what's great is that you've already done a lot of the heavy lifting. So you can just left click on the track select new track with duplicate settings. Now drag your host's audio over to that new channel, rename it to the host name, and then find a good area in his audio where he's talking for a little bit. Now everybody's voice has different frequencies that sound different depending on how they got recorded, how close they were to the mic, all that good stuff. So most likely you're gonna to wanna to EQ each person a little bit differently. Most of the time though, you're gonna have a somewhat similar EQ curve. Unless they were way too close or way too far back from the mic, then you might need to make some more drastic changes. No difference in the process though, you're still going for that same level on your volume. Kind of the blue light thing was during grad school and all of that. Now let's click on master right here. 
And what this essentially is, is both tracks on one channel. Now all you really need here is the limiter. This is just gonna get it as loud as it can be and it's basically a intense version of a compressor. Make sure that output level is set to negative one and then just slowly bring up that gain knob until your volume looks something like this. You want it hitting the yellow, but definitely don't want it going into that red. Now this part isn't completely necessary, but if you wanna mess with these knobs on the master, they can give you a little bit more polished sound. There's a couple more compressors and an EQ. So this can help you refine the sound just a little bit more. Now, this next step is definitely not always necessary, but it might be depending on how close the subjects were to each other when they did the podcast. If there's too much bleed from one mic to another, you're going to want to cut out all of the silence in between each person talking so that you don't hear any unnecessary breathing or chewing or sounds that they make while the other person is talking. Okay, I got one last trick for you. Not everybody thinks of this, but it can make a huge difference in the final sound. And that is the Burdum Denoiser. This plugin doesn't come with GarageBand, but it's free to download and I highly recommend that you get it. It's a no brainer. I'll leave the link in the description for you guys. So what you're gonna wanna do is bring all the levels down at once to about seven dB, eight dB, and then adjust that threshold until you find the sweet spot. When they're not talking, you want the green lines to be all the way down to the knobs. But while they're talking, you want them to be pulsating yeah, like that. And ideally, not Instagram, even there while they're talking. Our, uh, Twitter, X, whatever we call it. And then just find an adjustment of these parameters that sounds the best for your recording. On the far right, that's going to get rid of all the high hiss that's in the mics while they're not talking. All the way down to the far left is the lowest frequencies. But each one is just going to sound good at a certain point. All right, let's hear the before and after. My uh, grandparents and my dad did not, I think because my great grandparents farmed. I think they wanted far away from it. So I grew up with it in my family, but it wasn't something that we did necessarily every day. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. That's how you mix a podcast in GarageBand. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this, and I'll see you in the next one.